So now we're going to go through an example using the, uh, the structure factor. And specifically, we're going to look at the BCC structure, which I have drawn here. So we want to calculate the structure factor for BCC. And we know it has two atoms per unit cell, right? So we have the one associated with the primitive positions that gives us one atom per unit cell. And then we have the body center position right in the middle, which accounts for the second. So we need to basically account for those two atoms when we're doing the structure factor calculation. And so we need to also know their locations of those two atoms. So when we're talking about the corner or vertice positions, the primitive uh, positions, since that only accounts for one, we only need to know one location for that. So for the primitive position, we're going to use that as, we're going to use 0, 0, 1 to define that. And again, you know, you can map out all the positions they are, but remember, each one of these is only getting counted one eighth of a time, so we only need to know one position. So this is basically our first position. Uh, the second one is at the body centered position, which again, from crystallographic uh, points, you should be able to identify as one half, one half, one half. So this is the body centered. So these are our two positions that we need to look for uh, when we're looking at the structure factor for BCC. So what we're going to do is we want to calculate, and basically we're going to kind of redo the example we just did uh, in terms of the visual base-centered versus body-centered example when we looked at the diffraction intensity of the 001 plane and the 002 plane. So we want to use the structure factor to get the intensities of these two planes. So let's go ahead and write this out. So structure factor F, and I'm going to start with the 001, so HKL values of 001. And um, the first term is going to be atomic scattering factor F. So whatever the atom is, so we're just going to leave it general as F. So it's going to be in terms of that. So that way you could go back and, and if you know that this is an iron um, material or molybdenum or whatever, the BCC metal, you could plug in the atomic scattering factor for that position. Uh, but we're going to leave that general right now. And so then we get to the first term of uh, 2 pi i, and then we're going to plug in the values for HKNL and UVW. So I, I want to sort of show this back up here uh, as our equation here. So we have, oops, maybe this is a better form up here. Um, so we have U, K, and, uh, sorry, HK and L, which are our uh, plane uh, values. So we know that we're dealing with the 0, 0, 1 plane. And then the U, V, and W are the positions of the point. And so for the first point, we're going to be dealing with the 0, 0, 0 point, which is the primitive position. And then we would also uh, want to look at the second position, and we'll do that next. All right, so getting back to that. So basically, we're going to have... Um, if we're looking at uh, 0, 0, 1 and 0, 0, 0, right, that's going to be 0 times 0, and I'm just going to kind of spell it all out here just to keep track of it, plus 0 plus 0 times 0, right, we have another 0 and 0, because this is, uh, sorry, this is U, V, and W, and this is H, K, and L, right, so the last term is the one we really only have any Thing on so again zero and then times one so it's still zero so basically this uh, amounts to, to to nothing inside of this um, so let's look at the second term then so for the second we still have f so that we still have an atom 
uh, with an atomic scattering factor of F. And then our term inside, 2 pi i. And then we have, so now we're going to be dealing um, with the same plane because we're looking at the 0, 0, 1. So this is still our HKO. But now our U, V, W sub N is for the second position. So 1 half, 1 half, 1 half. Right? So basically 0 times 1 half plus 0 times 1 half, again, using these and these, plus the last one, which is 1 half times 1. So that's really the only term that amounts to anything. All right. So looking at this then, this is going to give us exponential. And then inside of this, uh, this is 0, 0, 0. So this is 0 times all of this. Right? So this gives us a 0 inside the exponential, which would give us 1. Right? Then plus the second term, which is an exponential um, 2 pi i. And then this is going to be multiplied by 1 half. So 1 half here. So more or less we have uh, 2 pi i times 1 half. And so that gives us, uh, so inside here, this would give us pi i. Right? All of this goes to pi i. And so from our from our math relationships that I can put back up here for a second. So this was zero, so it goes to one. Um, but uh, on this one, we want to look again at the evens and odds. So we have pi i, so that's going to be odd. So this should be negative one. So this whole thing will amount to negative one. And so that gives us that this is going to be f minus f. And so this comes out to be zero. So the structure factor for 0, 0, 1 is 0. So we've just shown what we showed visually in the last demonstration, uh, in the last example, is that for a body-centered position, the, or the body-centered position cancels out the diffraction of the 0, 0, 1 type planes. And so this gives us a structure factor of 0. So we're just kind of showing here that the structure factor uh, equation gives us the same information that the sort of the sketch and going through it that way did as well. So now on the second part, we want to look at the 0, 0, 2. All right, so let's look at the 0, 0, 2 plane now. So just as kind of a review, I've got the 0, 0, 2 as my HKL values, and I've got the U, V, and W for the primitive position is 0, 0, 0, and for the body center position is one half, one half, one half. So I've got those labeled as UVW1, UVW2. So now let's go ahead and do the same calculation, but for this um, different plane. So I've still got F uh, as my atomic scattering factor times the exponential, and that is 2 pi i. And then inside, again, I go, I'm looking at my first position and the HKL values. So that's 0 times 0 plus 0 times 0 plus 2 times 0, right? So those two. All right. And then for the second one, same form, but we're going to change to the body center position. So I got 0 times 1 half plus 0 times 1 half plus 2 times 1 half. All right, so using these and these. So if I do the same calculation, this is all zeros again, so we're going to get um, exponential of 0, which is 1, so we get f. And so this is always going to be, be the case for the primitive positions because you always have zeros here, and so this always boils down to f. Uh, and then the other one, this is going to give us 0, 0, now 1. So this gives us 2 pi i. This whole thing is 2 pi i. So that, if you remember from our evens or odds, this is our even. And our even was positive. So this is going to be uh, plus 1 for this whole term here. 
So that gives us f plus f. And so our, oops, sorry, 0, 0, 002 structure factor for 0, 0, 002 is going to be 2 times the atomic scattering factor. So this tells us that we will have, so not only does it tell us that we will have um, a diffracted intensity for the 0, 0, 002 plane, it actually tells us the value too. It tells us it's going to be 2 times the atomic scattering factor. So it's larger than um, the primitive position. So this allows us to calculate these various structure factors, tell us whether we're going to have a peak or not. You saw that this was uh, 2f, but the 0, 0, 001 was 0. So we say it doesn't, we don't expect it to diffract, it does, but also gives you the magnitude. So based on the structure factor, we can tell the magnitude of these atomic scattering factors. And that's very useful um, when we get to real patterns and being able to, to compare them. So based on this, we've done two calculations, right? We've done the calculation for uh, 0, 0, 2, and 0, 0, 1. But you can see that there's a, a large number, uh, if not an infinite number, of different planes, right? So typically, we don't do this case by case. We look at all the various uh, peaks. And so um, we can actually look and find um, more or less results of the structure factor because people have already calculated the various structure factors for the given crystallographic planes for BCC, FCC, and really all the structures. And so which planes uh, exist and which planes don't exist is put together in um, sometimes what people call uh, extinction rules. And let me switch over to the slide real quick and I'll show you an example of these extinction rules. All right, this is an example of the extinction rules for some of the cubic structures. So this is table 2.2 in your book. Uh, I've made a correction here uh, because they have a typo. So this should be body centered. Um, but this gives you all the different lattice types. So simple, base, body, and face. Uh, so these, sorry, this, this is not for cubic. This, this is just for the, the various types uh, of uh, lattice types. Um, and it gives you the diffraction pass uh, diffraction uh, that should exist and which ones are absent. So for a simple structure, we expect all the diffraction, uh, diffraction peaks for all the planes. So there's really no extinction rules. There's nothing that gets uh, extinct. So again, this is from, you know, when you add extra atoms, it can cause destructive interference of certain planes, like the example we saw with body centered cubic. So for body center cubic, let's look at this one. Um, so we saw that the 001 doesn't occur, but the 002 does. And so if you look at this, um, the, the general rule, not just those two planes, but for everything, is that if a diffraction event's going to occur, the HKL um, values, if you add them up, is going to be even, that that will exist. And then if, it's, if you add them up and it's odd, they don't exist. So there's a really nice rule that you can look at the HKL values and determine whether you expect to see a peak or not. So using the values that we just did, 0, 0, 1, if you add that up, it adds to 1. That's odd. That didn't occur. 0, 0, 2, add them up, you get 2. That's even. And you do expect it. So that's the, and you can keep going with other planes. And so the peaks that you expect for BCC, uh, the first peaks, that you expect uh, are kind of in this order. So uh, this is for BCC and it just shows you the first uh, seven uh, peaks that should occur. So we don't see a 0, 0, 1, uh, but we do see a 1, 1, 0, and we see a 2, 0, 0, uh, oops, sorry, uh, 2, 1, 1, and so forth. And if you notice all of these, they should uh, conform to this list down here. And anything that isn't there, uh, you'll see that it's odd. So that's the, the rules for this. And we can make uh, similar calculations for FCC and see that those values of HK and L 
have to be what we call unmixed. So they're all odd or all even. And those would exist if they're unmixed. And if they are mixed, uh, then we wouldn't expect to see them. So if we look up here, the first peak for FCC, we expect to be 111. 111, they're all the same, they're all odd, so they're unmixed. Uh, twos and zeros, we consider a zero odd or even. Uh, and so that is uh, even. 220, 311, all of those are odd. 222, all those are uh, uh, even. 331, so you get the point here in, in terms of so those are the general rules and a, and what they do is they tell us the allowable planes and the ones that would be absent and so that's kind of the power of the structure factor calculations uh, in this regard.